Hi everyone. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the tools that comes with the Inventory Framework plugin. The tool we're going to be looking at today can be found in the plugins folder. If you're not seeing the plugins folder, you can go to probably where your content is. You can press all and go into settings and show plugin content. You go into here. You're going to want to go into Inventory Framework Plugin Content. There's also C++ classes, um, but for now we're going to be going into this folder. We're going to go into Core, Widgets, and Editor Utility Widgets. And this folder will get expanded upon in the future when more tools come along. The Inventory Helper folder is where all the files that the Inventory Helper is using, but all of the tools are located in this folder. Uh, in the documentation, it mentions where you can find all this stuff and also explains why all the editor utility widgets are in the tools folder. So you can favorite it here and now you have quick access to all of the tools. Uh, currently there's only one, but in the future there will be more. So to begin, uh, you can either come here, right click it and run, or you can come up to here, tools, editor, utility widgets, and find the edit, uh, inventory helper here. Though sometimes this option doesn't seem to appear. Uh, I'm not sure why that might be a 5.1 bug. Well, uh, if we continue here, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna see this menu. For now, it's quite empty because we don't have an actor selected. So here, we're going to click on this chest. We're going to come up to here, update selected actor, and all of the containers it's holding will get updated here and appear here. But you might be wondering, what are these items over here? So the inventory helper has a feature called the void zone. And pretty much whenever you click and drag an item into the void zone, it will get pinned there. And now whenever you Swap levels, for example, go over here, you load a different level, you come back, it will stay here and you can probably start working on a different actor and you can now move this item over here. This has the nice benefit of allowing you basically a proxy to move items so you can move items from one actor to another. Uh, this also has the nice benefit of whenever you're working in a container that might be perhaps full, for example, if we fill this container and we want to move things around, but there's there's no space. Like if I want to rotate this gun, then I have to finically get rid of some items here. But if I just move these things over to the void, I can move this here. Now I can move this over here and here. You can also move things around in the void and the void is level dependent. So if you go into a different level, you can see it has its own set of voids and the demo map has its own voids. All of this data is saved within an actor that gets added to your level called void actor. This is specified in the documentation. The data has to be saved on some actor somewhere in the currently loaded level. This actor is editor only. So it is removed in cooked builds and will not take up any CPU time. Right now, the tiles that are hidden or locked will just get a text updated because developers sometimes just want to see the tiles and they might implement some kind of um, right click context menu uh, for each tile to probably lock it or hide it in the future. For now, it's just displaying hidden or locked if it's hidden or locked. You can also right click items, you can remove them, you can asset, uh, open the asset, you can also open the containers, so now you can start messing with this gun. Uh, you can also change items uh, to a different item right through here, though I don't suggest you change items into other items or change from items that have a container involved with either the original item or the new item. So for example, you don't want to change this apple into a backpack because the backpack has two containers and you don't want to change this gun into an apple because the gun has containers. 
You can also change the tile index from here, so you can click and drag. You can also manually put in numbers. Uh, you can change rotation. You can do a lot of things. You can also mess with the override settings here. If you don't want to mess with this menu, you also have the option of clicking on the handlebar up here that will select the container. And now you can change the container's settings in here. So you can start uh, expanding. You can also select items and that will change this menu to selected item. And you can go back to your selected container, selected item and mess with it here instead of having this context menu. Though this context menu also has the benefit of you can have multiple open at the same time. So you can collapse this, you can collapse this and have them here and now start moving this around and doing other things with it and still have the context menu open for it. You also have your database here. I covered this in the tour video, but for those of you who are new to this, this is the collection of all items that the asset manager finds within your project. So you can go here, asset manager, and it will basically scan through all the directories that you've told it to scan and search for items that are children of data asset core item. You can categorize them, you can put filters, and you can also just search by their name over here. There's also more advanced options here. You can search for default currency or you can search for whatever currencies you add and so forth and so forth. You can also zoom in and out of the void zone by uh, scrolling in and out. The inventory output also has a tips and tricks and link to the documentation. Most classes have a link to their documentation within the event graph near the top left. If you are getting this message, component state was not set to raw state, all you have to do is find the actor. So in our example, it's this. The editor utility widget will automatically convert it to raw state when you close the editor utility widget. Now you can see the message has gone away. But for example, if you have a actor that is set to editor state, was not set to raw state, all you have to do is find the actor, click on its uh, inventory component, and here you will find a function convert to raw state. You will press it and it will fix the issue. Last but not least, you have this button over here, uh, show component settings, which will allow you to mess with all of the components, uh, containers and, and its widget class and whether you want debug messages or not. Though I do not suggest you edit any of the container settings through this widget um, because the delegate from the on property changed has no way of recognizing which index, which, uh, so if you added container name here, it's not going to know which container it was. So if we change the dimensions or something, it has to refresh every single container to make sure that your change went through. This is a, uh, Let's see here in the editor, in the inventory helper category in the tools on the documentation, it lists here, it is not recommended to edit the container settings through the selected component widget. And it states right here, the on property change delegate does not return which index has been modified, meaning it is not possible to resolve which container or which item was modified, which means that every container widget and item widget must be updated. Only modify the container settings inside this widget if you really have to. Your other option is to go into the details panel for the inventory component, editing it here. And then once you're done, you press update selected actor and it will recognize your change. So here I can change it here, but I now have to update it here to get the new row. I highly suggest that you check the documentation because this might get updated in the future. That has been it. I hope you enjoy using the inventory helper tool.